One of the other amazing things about the Rocky Mountain Dinosaur Resource Center is how the product that every single cast that you offer is from a real specimen. We don't make anything up. You know, the little bit of sculpting I do on big skeletons is to fill a gap. You know, if I've got a chunk of bone with, with like a piece taken out of it, we'll fill that in. But, but no, we, uh, when we mold something, it's something real. You know, it comes from the real fossil. And in almost all cases, unless I'm partnering with another museum and their collections, um, it's usually something that we went out and found and dug up ourselves. That's, that's what I spend my summers doing is hunting around for fossils. And then I come back when it gets too cold and I spend the rest of the year Mostly in my office, I'm, I'm not in the lab as much as I'd like anymore, but I've spent a lot of years just sitting there cleaning bones off in the lab and molding them and building skeletons and displays for other museums. And what's great about our partnership in this company is I'm out climbing on shelves in the depths of who knows where in museums and all over the world, and I see a cool specimen, I'm thinking, I wish I had that. And as soon as I think I wish I had that, then I let you guys know and we start working out how can we get the rights to make this cast. And then we get the mold made, we make the cast, and now we can present real bones that are awesome that aren't in the literature. Because quite often, if it's the 472nd Allosaurus tooth and there's already Allosaurus cast out there. Nobody's going to write that paper. Nope. And no one's going to make a mold of it. No one's going to make a cast of it. But I think it's the coolest Allosaurus tooth ever. So, and this, the museums are like, yeah, I'm sure, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's a good point. That's actually a couple good points, is that there are so many discoveries waiting to be rediscovered on museum shelves everywhere, because in some cases, you've got 150 years, 200 years of backlog sitting on those museum shelves that somebody a long time ago, you know, your great to the nth grandparent might have been working on, and it's been sitting there ever since, and just no, there's, there's way more fossils than paleo, enough paleontologists to sit there and do the work. So nobody's really looked at it since then. And so when, when you're hunting through other museums' collections and you find something really cool, then we can partner with them and bring that to the rest of the world. And I think that's one of the real huge advantages of cast material is that it reproduces all the detail of the original fossil down to the microscopic level, but it makes it shareable to more people. You know, you go into any museum in the world, there will be original material there, but they're probably also going to have some cast material on display because that's the only way to make some of these fossils equitable. You know, there's, there are so many dinosaurs where we have almost one whole specimen. You know, like, like it's known from just a few bones, and the only people who get to see it are the people who have access to that museum, who can drive there or get to it. If it's in collections, you got to talk somebody into letting you look at the collections, which is pretty hard sometimes, even for those of us in the field, you know. And uh, the only way the rest of the world gets to enjoy it is we make copies of it. It's so. true. We are an interesting discipline because without art to help fan the excitement, because we find these really cool animals. It's funny because one of the forefathers of paleontology, Charles Marsh, hated mounts, didn't want to do art. He was against it. And so it wasn't until 1896 when he published Dinosaurs of North America and his people basically said, Chuck, I doubt they said Chuck, you must draw. And then because he was Peabody's favorite nephew, he brought in the best artist in the world to reproduce the bones with pencil. And his marsh plates, I have a collection. They're awesome. To this day, I can hold them next to the bones and they're identical. Like, just those by themselves make something that you could frame and put on your wall at home. Like, I, I love scientific illustration. I think they look fantastic. And so. what's been, in fact, on like some of the YPM specimens, you can see where damage has happened since Marsh had it drawn. Oh, really? Yeah, like, oh, that is not... Somebody... But it's been 100 years. But, I mean, like, that also brings up the point that there's a lot of people who aren't necessarily, like, research scientists. I am not a research scientist. I'm a technician. I work on the original material, and that's where my niche is. But I also know people who've built whole careers, people I consider paleontologists in their own right, just based on their own knowledge and their own research, who built whole careers being paleo artists. Yep. Where they go through, they go out in the field in many cases and they work closely with the research scientists and they develop this concept and then they they draw or paint it a lot of people are doing digital artwork these days and it's amazing what they come up with and it and boy that paleo art gets vetted so thoroughly it doesn't necessarily go through a peer review process but your peers are definitely reviewing it and there's whole careers in there even if you're not somebody who wants to go sit in an office and write papers all day yep or, or run around with a tape measure all day. There are so many aspects of this field that you can get into and enjoy and get something productive out of and contribute to 
the the science with and that's one of the cool things fossil craze does is we reach out to the artists we we go see art on instagram and say that is an excellent specimen and we reach out and ping them on direct message and every one of our artists is someone we found on instagram minus tracy ford because mm -hmm. he's legend yeah and uh we've reached out to them and they've contributed and we've got these partnerships and we keep adding to the stable because the artists bring in such a they bring that extra level of excitement by clothing it we take the bones and we tell the skeletal story well they drape it in yeah clothes. they put flesh on the bones and they they make it real in a big way a way that i simply can't do correct i've tried I you haven't know, been like, up here. Like, like I told you, my sketches and my doodles in my notebook, but that's where it stops. So, uh, I even tried painting. A, you, you lent me a, a blank one, and uh, I was advised, uh, Dr. Lopez said, you probably shouldn't be the painting of the, the fossil crate side of the business. I says, but it looks nothing like what the video I watched said it should look like. You're right. It's real expertise. I spend a long time training my people. A long time.